Hey, Facebookers, YouTubers, and Instagrammers, we're back here for another episode. And in today's episode, we're gonna be looking at the finer elements of the hunting. If you saw my last video of me working Billy in my rabbit pen, I was doing some swipe works, popping retrieves over the top of his head. And I wanna go into a bit more detail about that. I get a lot of questions on that. So in this video, we're gonna look at the finer details of doing swipes, pipping the dog to our hand, shoulder movement, etc. So let's get going. Right, so first of all, I thought I would just show you without the dog some of the bits and pieces that I do. Today, as I've already explained, is about teaching the dog to come to my hand on a pip and that's all done through association. So if my dog likes retrieving, I'm gonna use Billy for this video. Um, he loves a retrieve. And so very early on, I was doing a mixture of what I call swipes, which I'm gonna explain in a moment, um, and also pipping the dog to my hand to find a retrieve early on. Now the key factor in this, and I talked about it in the last little hunting video, hopefully you've seen that. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it in the description below so you can click on it. Um, but what I'm looking to do is try and get that dog hunting, not get caught handling the retrieve. If you walk around with a retrieve in your hand like this or even like this and the dog catches onto you, all the dog is gonna do is dance around in front of you. There's a nanoseconds difference between getting caught and not getting caught and the two completely different reactions from the dog. So we're wanting to try and put a retrieve down without the dog being uh, catching us do it. If you're able to get scent on the ground and get the dog hunting for that scent and often finding that scent at your fingertips or finding a retrieve alternating times at your fingertips, the dog is going to hunt head down. If the dog is catching you throwing the retrieve in any fashion and he sees you doing that or she sees you doing that, they will fit quickly start just looking at you and not hunting. So there can be a nanosecond difference between getting caught throwing it or placing it or rubbing it on the ground and not. So the key is not to get caught doing this. Now, I'm gonna talk you through what I do here. So I always teach my clients when I'm doing this to keep the retrieve in their left hand. Your right hand is your steering hand, okay? And often what I'm looking to do is when the dog is a little bit away from me, you always have to have your whistle in your mouth. When the dog's a little bit away from me, I'm gonna drop down, quickly swipe, the retrieve across the ground, tuck my hand behind my back. And as I'm going like this, I'm gonna show you one motion. I go like that. And then the dog's gonna to come to your hand and hunt, 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 hunt. I try to then normally distract them. So coming around to my left hand side, I distract them around to my right. And then you'll see with my left hand, as I come around to the right, I drop the retrieve, the dog comes back over and finds it. Now, the reason why I don't put it down straight away is that your dog will just constantly find it and then not hunt. I want that dog to really hunt that patch of ground out, okay? So often I'll do a swipe, pip to my hand, fast, fast, fast. I might move on a little bit. When the dog's not looking, swipe again, pip, drop the, uh, drop the dog to my hand, and then distract it and let it have a find. And as they get better, I make them hunt for longer before they have the find. The other thing you might have seen me doing, and I do try and highlight it in my videos, is when I'm hunting, uh, for example, in my pen or out on a piece of open ground, I will let the dog go away from me. Just as the dog gets maybe 10 foot from me, I throw the retrieve over the top of the dog. And if your dog does not turn sharp, you do not do this. Because as that retrieve's going into the dog's head, I'm dropping down, I'm pipping, so the dog's spinning on the spot, coming back towards me. And as the dog turns, it lands behind them. And then I'm able to hunt onto it. But again, you can only do that if you have a really sharp turn. And the sharp turn comes from the dog getting that hit of scent at your fingertips early on. So in my early Charlie's vlogs and my early Billy's vlogs, you'll see me doing quite a lot of this work. But I'm gonna try and show you with Billy now out in the open field. It's not gonna flow as much as I would normally do it because I'm gonna be trying to explain what I'm doing as I'm going. I hope this helps. Let's give it a go. Right, okay, so I've sat Billy up. I've got one of my rabbit skin dummies. This is one of my 150 gram ones. I've attached a piece of cord to it. And to start off with, before I start hunting, I'm just gonna drag this around by putting a bit of natural scent down. It's gonna help him kickstart him into hunting. Billy, sit, good boy. So I'm just gonna drag this around, putting a little bit of scent everywhere. Hopefully I'm gonna try and stay on camera. Good 
So I put a bit of scent down there. I'm gonna put that back in my holster, get that out of the way. Now I've got a rabbit ball here. Now, as I said, the main thing here is to not get caught handling it. So I don't know if you noticed, I took it out of my bag and I put it back around my back here. I'm actually gonna tuck it in around the front of my salopette so he doesn't see I'm handling it. And I'm gonna cast him off, try and hunt him. And you're gonna see me do a swipe with the ball and I'm gonna try and move him around a little bit. And then with a little bit of luck, I'll place it down for him to pick with a bit of luck. I'm gonna go a bit further back, Billy. The hardest thing about all this filming, Lark, is staying on camera and having a mic correction. So here we go. Always good lad. Good lad. Good lad. There you go. Good boy. Sit. Good boy. Well done. Sit. So I placed it down on the ground when he didn't see. It's, it's one of those things I do so quickly. As soon as I overthink it for the camera, I tend to get it wrong, but that did go okay there. Um, normally I would let him travel a little bit more, uh, travel a little bit more to settle him, to get him to hunt, but I've got to try and keep this all on camera if I can. So I'm going to let him see me put the ball down so he thinks it's on the ground. I'm going to pick that up. I'm going to cast them onto it. Now I cast my dogs off on my hunt whistle. Good lad, good lad, good lad, good lad, good lad, good lad. See how he looked at me there? Good boy. So I literally just dropped that behind him then. As long as he doesn't see me handling the retrieve or placing it down, I'm okay. I can even end up pointing at it as long as he doesn't see me put it down. So I'm going to go back a little bit again. Good lad. Good lad. Good lad. So I just so I show you now when I do that pip to my hand, he naturally comes to my hand because I've done this so much with him that he has a find or a hit of scent. So he's really at the stage where I'm not putting the retrieve down very much which is why he's not being as natural as normal here because we've slightly moved on from this. And for me now, it's about making him flow and not overdoing this. But as a young dog, I do lots and lots of this to really get them understand that Pip means come to my hand. Good lad. So now I can even just turn. What I don't do, what I don't do is look at him. Try not to look at him. Good boy. Sit. Now, that was a much dead that was a much better example there of me swiping, hunting. I moved on a few feet to the right, swipe, hunt, and then when he wasn't looking, get it down. As I said, if you struggle with this and you don't get the retrieve down quick enough and you get caught, he will start looking at you. What I was saying before is when I'm hunting them, I try to look at them out of my peripheral vision rather than directly at them. Because if he hesitates and looks at you, he'll hesitate. And that's where you get this hunting stop, hunting stop and you want to avoid that. So I try to not look directly at the dog. That way I don't make that eye connection and it stops the dog hesitating so much. As I said now, this is I, I've done this a lot further ago, uh, a while back. I still do this, but I tend to let him hunt a bit more when I'm traveling. So for him, he feels this is a bit odd for him now, which is why normally he would flow a little bit better. But obviously, as I said, I'm trying to keep this on camera first. So I'm going to do one more. I'm gonna pick up a bit of grass this time. Chuck that on my retrieve. Chuck that down, cast them onto it, sit. I try and use my shoulders a little bit more. See, he looked at me there, but because I wasn't looking at him.
he's so quick at this now that he catches me out quite easy. So most of the time now, I'll try and show you now if I don't get caught. I prefer to throw the retriever over his head. So I'm gonna try and do that for you. I have done it on that previous video. You just might not catch it on camera. So I'm gonna cast him off. And hopefully when he's away from me, I'll put the retriever over without getting caught. <laughs> we'll see. Ready? Good luck, good luck. Good luck, good luck, good luck. Not looking at him, see? Good luck. Now you probably didn't see that on camera because I think it probably went off camera. Hunt whistle. There's someone here I don't actually know, so I'll just let them figure it out. Good boy, good boy, sit. Billy, heel. Heel, sit. So you can see how obsessed he is with the retrieve. Um, so trying to get the retriever over, over the top of his head so he doesn't see, turning him back across. As I said, you've got to get the timing right. If you get caught chucking it, you've had it. Um, the other thing you'll probably notice I did back there, and I'm always telling everyone it's all about your shoulders. If that dog's out of my far right or left, and I want to pip the dog through, I don't stand where I'm going. I'm always pointing the other direction. So you'll see he was out there on that left-hand side. I showed him my back and I pipped him through. That way he comes through tight. Pip does not mean turn. Pip does not mean turn. It means come across my toes. It's just in 98% of the cases, a dog is going to have to turn to come across your toes. And so using your shoulders is so important to the dog getting used to coming through all the time. So I have three position shoulders, left and right. And then I have what are called toes, which is where I lean over and pip the hand, my hand to my feet, my dog comes in. And it's a collection of those three movements, which keeps that dog within that 12 to 14 foot range of hunting. He doesn't really have a pattern yet, but that will come with a bit of time. Anyway, I hope this has been useful. As, you, as usual, don't forget to subscribe and like. Any questions, stick them in the description below, guys. And happy training. Come on, Billy.